Sven Bensler, you mentioned a lot of references of the Bible. What about John 10.30, the Father and me are one? The brother quote a verse of the Bible, Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 30, the Father and me are one. It is not the Father and me are one, it is I and my Father are one. It's not the Father and me are one. Now this quotation, I and my Father are one, to know what it is, you have to know the context. You have to understand the context that I and my Father are one. To know this, you have to go a few verses earlier. If you read Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 23, it speaks about the context that the Jews, they entered the temple in Solomon's porch, verse number 23. Verse number 24 says that the Jews came upon Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and they asked him, how long does thou make us doubt? If thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse number 25 says, I have told you, but you believe not in me. The work that I do, they bear witness of my father. Verse number 26 says, you do not believe in me because you are not my sheep. Verse number 27 says, my sheep, they hear me and they follow me. Verse number 28, I give them eternal life. No man can pluck them out of my hand. Verse number 29 says, my father that give it to me is greater than all. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. So in context, it means in purpose. Verse number 28 says that no man can pluck them out of my hand. Verse number 29 says, my father is greater than all. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Verse number 30, I and my father are one. So it means they are one in purpose. If I say my father is a medical doctor and he's a doctor, I'm a medical doctor and my father are one, it means we are one in profession. It does not mean one in person. But the Christians say, no, no, it means one in person and my father are one, indicates that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God. If I agree for sake of argument, further if you read in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 21, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, my father is in me and I in thee. He tells his apostles, to his 12 apostles, my father is in me, I and thee, and we are one. The same one is used here. So do you mean to say there are 14 gods now? Father is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is in the apostles. So there'll be 14 gods. So you have to coin a new word. Instead of Trinity, you have to coin a word for 14 gods. Here what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, meant the same one was used, that one in purpose. And further it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 23, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it is the apostles that I am in you and you and me, we are one. That means one in purpose. And immediately you read further, Gospel of John chapter 10, verse number 31, the Jews, they pick up stones to stone Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Verse number 32, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, many of good works have I done. For which of my good works do you stone me? Verse number 33, all this is from my head. Any Christian who has the Bible can open and check up all the references I'm giving. Gospel of John chapter number 10 verse number 33 says that we don't stone you for good works. You being a man, you blaspheme is saying I am God. Verse number 34 says that isn't it mentioned in your scriptures that ye are gods and the one to whom the word of God comes is called as God. Your scripture is not broken. So here if you read in context that I and my father are one is in purpose. It doesn't mean that they are one in unity and it doesn't claim at all that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God. Otherwise, it would mean that there are 14 gods. So what it means is that the purpose of Almighty God and Jesus Christ, the messenger of God, is one and the same. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. Rahul again. Uh, thank you uh, for giving me the chance again. Uh, just another question I had in mind. Uh, Dr. Naik, coming from India, uh, you would, I suppose you know about uh, when it comes to marriages in India, they do horoscope matching before going ahead with the match. Uh, I know that this is strictly forbidden in Islam, but I just want to know, is this categorized as shirk or is it just makru and something that you should try not to get into? Well, this question is as far as reading horoscope, reading the future and the kundli, it's a Hindu culture. Is it shirk or is it haram in Islam? Is it only simple haram or shirk? It's mentioned in the Quran, Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 90, about fortune telling. It's haram. It is prohibited. It is a big sin in Islam. Hope okay. that's the question. Okay. Thank you so much. Next question from Carolina D'Souza on the question slip. 
In your talk, you singled out Jesus as a very unique person. Then you emphasized how Moses and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were mortals. Doesn't this comparison make Jesus more special? The question posed by the sister is that when I spoke about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in comparison, I proved that Muhammad and Moses, peace be upon him, they were mortals. Doesn't it make Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, special? Special, yes, but not God. Special, yes. He's a special messenger. Every messenger was given a speciality. A speciality. Like Moses, peace be upon him, he is called as Kalimullah, that Almighty God spoke to him. So in that way, he was special. Same way, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was special because he was born miraculously without any male intervention. Because Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born miraculously without male intervention, he was special. But that does not make him God. You know what people say? Normally, some of the Christians, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he had a mother, he had no father. So who's the father? The Almighty God. So just because he had no worldly father, if it makes him God, the replies given in Sulal Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 59, it says, Inna masala isa in the laika masala adam, halaka min turab, summa kala laukun fayakun. That the similitude of Jesus is the same of Adam, peace be upon him. He was made from dust and said, be it was. If you say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, Almighty God, because he had no father, then Adam, peace be upon him, according to the Quran and the Bible, he had no mother and no father. So do you mean to say he's a greater God? So it is just a miracle of Almighty God that does not mean Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God. Neither does it mean that Adam, peace be upon him, is God. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. My name is Neto Raymond. I work in Dubai as a salesman. Now my question is just on fasting. I just want to know how somebody can control himself by fasting from morning up to in the evening. We know very well that Jesus himself fasted for 40 days. And yet you say that Muslims are more Christians than Christians themselves. We are asking the question that Muslims, we fast from dawn to sunset, and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, fasted for 40 days. You say that. 40 days. There is no mention of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, fasting for 40 days in the Quran. And even the Christians, when they fast, they don't fast like the Muslims do. There were different sort of fasting, depending on which sect you belong to. Some sect for fasting is not having non-veg. Some sect, they have only boiled food. So there are different sects in Christianity which fast in different ways. I don't know of any sect in Christianity which fast for 40 days. If they fast, they may have, okay, no non-veg, only vegetables, that's their type of fasting. Some fasting is only having boiled food, that's their fasting. There are different types in different sects, but I don't know of any sects in Christianity which fast like the Muslims or neither like they fast for 40 days continuously, like the way you're saying. Hope that answers the question, brother. The next question on the slip is a short information question from Ansari Iman. Ask for Dr. Zakir Naik's email ID. The email ID foundation islam at irf.net and my personal id is zakir at irf.net you can go to our website www.irf.net irf is a short form of the organization islamic research foundation where do you get your books sold in dubai which bookshops from zina you can go on the net and alhamdulillah all the books are available on the net it is free for downloading the lot of material for Dawa. There are books available. I don't know the address where it's available in Dubai. But there are available if you go to Bombay, I know. And here there are some people who have reprinted. I personally don't know the address, but you can go to the website and surely download all the material on the net. It's for free. Yes, brother. Short question in two lines, please. Yeah, yeah. You see, we believe that Amanto uh, Billahi wa Kutubai wa this is in Islam. Is it the same in Christianity? Do they believe in our Prophet and do they believe in our uh, book that is Quran? The question, what he quoted is the verse of the Quran which I quoted in my talk from Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 177, that to believe in Allah, believe in the last day, believe in the angels, believe in the books and believe in the messengers. He's asking that do the Christians also believe in the messenger and the books? Yes. What the Christians believe, the Jews, Christians and Muslims, the Jews believe in all the prophets that came before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. 
the Christian, they take a step forward and they say that we also believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and the Injil. So all the prophets for Jews believe, the Christians believe, but they believe in additional prophet by the name of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. What the Muslims do, we take a step forward and we say believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the last and final revelation, the Quran. So all the messengers with the Christian believe and all the messengers and the books the Christian believe, we Muslim believe. But the Christians do not believe in the last and final message, the Quran, and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we tell them, take a step forward. There is prophecy of the last and final messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in your scriptures. Take a step forward and accept him and come to the straight part of Deen al-Haq. Hope that answers the question, brother. With the last question of the day from brother Muhammad Uwais, one of my non-Muslim friends asks about verse 929 of the Quran where Allah orders to fight against non-Muslims until they believe. He asks, is it not arrogance? One of the non-Muslim friends has asked this person, is it not arrogance? The question posed is, the verse of the Quran says, fight until they believe. Is it not arrogance? We have to read in context. If you read the context, it says that fight until there is no transgression. But once the transgression is over, we have to stop. So if you read in context, all the verses of the Quran that speak about fighting, including Surah Tawbah, Surah Anfal, immediately after it says that peace is better. Even Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 5, that fight wherever you find the kafir in the battlefield, it says, but if the mushrik wants peace, don't just give it to him, export him to a place of security. So all the places that talk about fighting, that is jihad fi sablillah or kital fi sablillah, it mainly, if you analyze, it is in the battlefield that they're fighting or what they're doing kital is against operation, is against transgression. It also continues that if they want peace, peace is the best. So you have to read in context and then you understand the real meaning. Hope that answers the question. Brother Arif Dulpar will propose the vote of thanks. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I really have the pleasure to thank uh, all of you, dear sisters and brothers, for being here tonight. And I pass my thanks to our dear guest, Dr. Zakir Naik, and his brother, Dr. Muhammad Naik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.